Thank you. Um, if yesterday we had a, a discussion on the Roma civil society and uh, uh, it was generally agreed that there is uh, a time for reflection, there is a time for uh, shifting the paradigm and uh, continuing acting and re-strategizing how to build the new face of, of the, the Roma civil society. Uh, knowledge production, it doesn't mean just uh, reflection, but it means interaction, building uh, uh, coalitions and uh, learning from uh, other uh, uh, entities and from other uh, structures. Today, um, we look at this particular aspect and we try to put as a topic, what we can learn from uh, different uh, 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 movements like LGBT, the feminist uh, movement, how we can build a, a coalition, how we can uh, somehow put uh, the um, issue of the, the human rights uh, on the, the public agenda and not the last, how the trade unions, they try to mobilize people and they strategize around of having uh, 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 masses, uh, support of, of the masses. So for this uh, um, uh, topic, we have quite a big uh, number of, uh, of panelists and uh, uh, as you can see, we have a uh, uh, very young and devoted uh, uh, panelists and also we have uh, uh, senior uh, uh, people that already uh, experience in their career uh, uh, building and contributing to, to different uh, uh, movements and way of uh, activism. So, I would start first with uh, Yelena um, because uh, in her paper she uh, uh, put it there how was her experience from, or how, how she, she, she did the transition from the so-called Roma activist to the feminist uh, movement. Please. Thanks, Well, there are a lot of questions actually posed uh, by the organizers, and uh, and I have to say that I'm actually very happy that uh, the relation of the political action of actions of Roma people to the feminist scholarship is recognized uh, as important to discuss this uh, kind of settings, and uh, I I will not be able to answer all of the questions. Uh, first, because we don't have enough time, and second, because I don't feel competent to do so. Uh, so I decided to talk uh, about the feminist perspectives, which uh, I try to inco incorporate uh, to the Roman politics. Uh, for me personally, to understand this revelation uh, was a long and sometimes painful process. Um, I will a little bit later explain why it was painful. Uh, I studied gender studies for three years, and uh, I learned a lot of important theories and principles. For some of them, I felt they mirrored the realities, and are especially of relevance uh, for the positionings of Roman women. Uh, now, since I don't have a lot of time, I will just talk about several theories and principles. Uh, I find the most important. Uh, intersectionality is one of them. Uh, this means that uh, the social constructions or the categories of difference, uh, such as gender, ethnicity, class, and sexual identities, work together to create a specific place for a person in the complexity of power relations. Uh, imagine, for example, that you have a Roman man and a Roman woman. Uh, in the late 20s, or the same competencies applying for a job uh, to a uh, white 
rail and toil. Our quite relevant majority of employers, but please don't ask me about statistics <laughs> because I don't know them. And, uh, the reason why I don't know them is because basically I don't care about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to being potentially, potentially exposed to a racist employer, a woman could face sexism as well. Uh, she could drive herself into a chance related to her marriage, status, and the plans of giving birth. Uh, this is only one simple example that uh, shows how sexism and racism can work together to produce a kind of ungrateful situation for all women. But it shows that we cannot assume that all Roma are in the same power position. And uh, this also shows that we can't fight uh, anti gypsyism while ignoring sexism. Uh, furthermore, we have to take into consideration unprivileged class, non heterosexual identities, disabilities, and uh, other creative, non mainstream identities when we conceptual our ideas. Uh, otherwise, I believe the Roman movement is in danger to produce more and more misunderstandings among the people who actually, again, as I believe, have the same goals. Uh, the movement is often criticized for being an elitist movement, and I agree. Uh, I will explain to you uh, one situation which helped me to come to this conclusion. Uh, I'm a linguist and I'm very interested uh, in analyzing this course since I was also interested in German women activists and their self representations For my master thesis, I looked uh, at the media campaign on European German women. Um, I don't know if you all know about this campaign. So I will just briefly explain uh, what is it about. Uh, several Romani uh, women activists came together and their, they, uh, uh, their main activity was to post uh, interviews with Romani women on their website. Um, one of the goals was actually to, uh, uh, to bring a different picture about Roman women because, as we all know, uh, in the media, there is a lot of misrepresentations. And they criticized this campaign a lot, and I hope I will mean, not the organizers of the campaign. Uh, but uh, I also want to say that uh, this campaign uh, brings a lot of insights as well. And uh, I will tell you only about things I think are important to point out. Even though the campaign is about women, in the other interviewees are normally women, mostly educated activists. Well, they, are, they interviewed two men as well, but men are not important now. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, the discourse of the campaign uh, mainly remains a uh, reiteration of the mainstream discourse of the Roman movement. However, I was curious to look at what is not said and to look at the alternative narratives of Roman women interviewees. This is another important thing I learned from feminists. I found out that these are exactly the narratives which point to the specific position, power positions of Romani women, both within Romani communities and in relation to the other. And uh, it shows the realness of elitism. For example, even though the organizers of the campaign promote the expression of Romani identity, a woman activist from Macedonia said that she would not accept this from a woman who would rather hide her own origin in order to get a job and feed her children. Finally, I want to explain what I said at the beginning that my understanding of the, of the relation of family scholarship and the Roman movement was a painful process. Well, it was painful because it was a long process of really thinking, criticizing, but I couldn't find a way to put some of my conclusions into an action. And finally, I think that I have a good way to also um, use something of what I learned. Uh, and it is related to the media campaign I was talking about. Uh, one woman from Romania, and only one woman, emphasized the problem of trafficking in Romani people. After that, I started researching this issue in Serbia and realized that Roma being the most vulnerable group when it comes to trafficking in human beings, 
are completely disregarded from the policy documents. Uh, neither there is an understanding of the importance of Roma participation in policy formation and implementation. I'm now very enthusiastic and happy that families and companies to search for silences and will at least try hard to understand the situation and possibly ever control change. <clears throat> to conclude, the Roman government needs a higher level of sensibility to be able to fight its own elitism. I know, for example, a situation when the Roman person in position discriminated against Roman lesbians and consequently an NGO was rejected for the possibility to run a program. Roman individuals, especially those in power, have to learn from, fem from feminists more if they want to make these this societies uh, better place for, for all Roma. Thank you. Thank you, Yelena. Uh, um, I would uh, invite uh, uh, Erika to, to share with us uh, her thoughts in the relation with the feminists that she uh, somehow nurtured in a way or another the process of Roma feminist uh, in uh, Romania. Please. Thank you, Marius. I'm um, very happy. First of all, uh, let me share with you that uh, my experience with feminism is a quite a long journey uh, from starting in the, at the end of the 90s by, by looking for critical understanding of nationalist identity politics, I found in feminist theories uh, very, very useful uh, uh, critical ideas. Uh, the journey was long uh, and I want to cut it short and just uh, confess that uh, nowadays I am assuming a standpoint of, uh, of a leftist feminist. Um, so in, in this sense, uh, let me uh, go back a little bit uh, to yesterday's uh, uh, debates and uh, uh, there I, I guess there was a shared understanding among us that there is a need to repoliticize um, uh, whatever happened in the past uh, 20 or so years in the name of the Roma. Repoliticize culture, repoliticize rights and repoliticize also social inclusion. Because especially policies for social inclusion are, um, uh, with all the respect with its uh, advantages and, and benefits, uh, one of the consequences of social inclusion policies was actually the depolitization of exclusion, of marginalization, of poverty, if you wish. So what I'm really thinking a lot nowadays about is how to do this, so how to repoliticize uh, social exclusion, marginalization, not to reduce it to a so-called technical, neutral policy issue, but to understand its uh, structural causes that are embedded in nowadays capitalism and in the neoliberal order that we all experience today. Uh, all these thoughts of mine were also informed by, by feminism. Um, maybe Nancy Fraser's feminism and Nancy Fraser's uh, view on, on, on the role of feminism uh, as a cultural critic, as a social and political criticism uh, is, is informing a lot uh, my, my, my work and my understanding. And first of all, and I guess Everybody agrees, I hope, on this. Uh, we all know that feminism is not a natural extension of a universal femininity or womanhood. It's a political option. It's my political option, and leftist feminism is my political ideology. So that's the tax standpoint that I'm talking about from. Um, and uh, since we don't have too much time, maybe uh, I, I would like to also share with you um, uh, my very personal experiences in uh, uh, 
um, uh, uh, in activism for, for housing rights and housing justice. And actually, that was uh, the, the, the involvement that uh, um, forced me to uh, think how to build coalition around, around this, this issue. Well, the, the challenge that I was faced with, we were faced with in the city of Cruz, where I'm from, was uh, forced eviction of uh, impoverished community, mostly ethnic Roma, uh, from a centrally placed uh, uh, territory of Cluj, and their re relocation uh, nearby the garbage dump of the city. So nearby, uh, so, so to a territory that is polluted, that is segregated, that is stigmatized, and there are other 1,000 and so people already were, were uh, making their, their living. So the challenge was how should we as activists and as academics, or as both, uh, put this question on the public agenda? How to politicize it? Should we, uh, should we emphasize more that this was about institutional racism, this was about ethnic Roma, who are the victims of institutional racism, and or should we um, highlight that forced evictions and, and housing discussion is actually part of, of how um, society, including the housing domain, is marketized and privatized, and what are the consequences of, of these larger uh, socio-economic processes. Uh, and actually, um, based on, 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 uh, on people's experiences who, who lived out directly, and we are seeing you know, directly the experience of, of dispossession uh, and stigmatization, so together with them, at least that's my understanding today, uh, we managed to, uh, um, to have a contribution to raise public awareness about, about the systemic causes of housing injustice. And, and in this way to build coalition between impoverished ethnic Roma who are victims of forced evictions and between uh, a larger category of people who uh, uh, are, are produced as redundant by, by neoliberalism. So they are so-called unemployable, they are so-called unable to provide homes on the market. Uh, they are useless for this society. And in this sense, uh, they are dehumanized. They are considered as cheap human, and they are uh, also also stigmatized. Obviously, they are considered as, in, as inferior people who are not able to adapt to the market economy and who are not able to be competitive on, on what market economy is about, including housing market. So uh, it was uh, it was this uh, negotiation among different perspectives then how, how to how to deal with all this and, it, and, and at the same time to make a critic about the ideology of meritocracy uh, and about marketization and privatization and how this affects among others impoverished uh, uh, Roma. So uh, I'm very much convinced that this, this um, initiative of ours and, and joint uh, efforts with colleagues from Eucharist, uh, that as a result of which we created what is called the current front for, for housing justice, it's, it's a good example for, for rethinking uh, social and cultural and political issues together. So, and obviously I'm here together with you to look for uh, for a politics that uh, not only promises but also uh, makes real uh, a transformative uh, 
uh, action that includes cultural recognition, includes social justice, and includes political empowerment. That's my feminism. Thank you. Thank you also for your insightful uh, uh, thoughts. So I will give the, the floor to Anna Garozzi and to make the discussion a little bit uh, more dynamic. We'll get a series of questions and comments on uh, families and uh, the, the possible relationship with the, the, the Roma movement. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I want to say I'm very happy that there is space uh, for discussing uh, feminist and LGBT issues finally uh, publicly within the Roma movement. And uh, well, the most important is that I don't have answers. I have some criticisms and I have much more questions than answers. Uh, but I will try to make sense. So, um, about the cooperation between feminist movements and the Roma movement. Um, on the surface and on the structural level, uh, the goals of both movements, whatever the Roma movement and the feminist movement mean, uh, are very similar in terms of political representation, mainstreaming, changing the perception and the discourse about Roma and uh, on women. Uh, as the obstacles are very similar, but we do have many differences, of course. Um, but I, I will be a bit simplistic because it's very easy. Um, there are two ways for uh, uniting our efforts within these two movements. Uh, one way is to incorporate women's voices into the Roma movement, and the other one, to uh, call parallelly, incorporating Roma uh, voices in the feminist movement or women's movement. Um, for the first option, first of all, awareness about women's specific issues and space for women in the leadership of Roma NGOs is needed. Um, we can see that this still needs to be developed if we look at the numbers of uh, Roman women in the leadership of Roma NGOs. And I want to note here that uh, including women not, doesn't necessarily mean uh, including feminist perspectives, which is, I think, an other issue to discuss. Um, I would go for the feminist perspective rather than uh, only for women. Uh, the participation of Romani women in mainstream feminist movements is also a necessity, especially as we face that oftentimes women NGOs focus on issues still concerning middle class white women. Still. Um, uh, for me, it seems that both parties are still reluctant to include Romani women. Roma NGOs and the Roma civil society fears that raising women's issues would ruin their facade they have been building throughout the years, and women's NGOs are simply afraid to deal with minority issues. And uh, here I would like to raise a very important issue, uh, and I hope that we can discuss and we can talk about this. And this is connected to identity politics and the politics of culture, um, in which we can learn and we should learn a lot from the feminist and queer theories. Um, many issues concerning women and Roman women are over ethnicized and uh, everyone, even ourselves, sometimes uh, is reluctant to raise them, claiming to defend the cultural integrity or the traditions of the Roma. I believe that our responsibility as feminists and as intellectuals is to take these very sensitive issues and explain that most of them are not results of cultural, romantic cultural characteristics, but uh, they need to be changed and not preserved. And here I would like to open to your comments. So, uh, questions? Comments? So Valerie, then Jericho, uh, Arans, okay, 
Yes, you can speak loud without that. Valeria Novoselsky, Roma Virtual Network. Uh, Anna, you said about some cultural characteristics which should be changed and not to be kept. Uh, just more in details about this. No. Unpuzzle this phrase. Yeah. So, Jericho? So, I wanted to, to, to uh, highlight another issue because uh, we, we tend to, to, to have uh, uh, at different times one dimensional view of uh, alliances. And I, I think that, uh, that sometimes we try to explain everything by sociology and social anthropology. And to me, sometimes it's inadequate. Uh, uh, the issue of alliances and politics is not an issue of uh, uh, anything else but interests. And uh, those who uh, uh, work ever in politics uh, know that uh, it is not about uh, anything else but the uh, interests uh, or demands that different groups uh, share. And I agree absolutely that we have to learn uh, a lot from uh, uh, from a, a feminist movement, but we also have a lot to work with uh, from other movements, Kurdish movement, Albanian movement, Catalan movement, also quite democratic movements in Turkey, in Ukraine, in Spain. So I, if we talk about, about alliances, some years ago we were saying we need to learn from African Americans. Now we say we need to learn from feminism. We need to learn from all of, that, all of those, but the answer is in us. So uh, I think we, we live in times when we, we see International Union was uh, holding on to United Nations. United Nations, irrelevant. Despite, uh, besides uh, Security Council and military intervention, not many people care about the United Nations. Then the Council of Europe. Council of Europe today, in this region at least, weak organization, not many governments pay attention to it. European Commission as well. We see the limits of the Commission. Whenever they try to work with the Commission, the Commission says, go back to your member states. We are realizing more and more that we need to rely on ourselves. To me, alliance building is about finding answers in ourselves, working on ourselves, making uh, ourselves stronger, and then going to alliances with, with whomever we share the interests, whether it's a uh, housing justice movement, whether it's anti-banks anti uh, 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 movement in, uh, or uh, what was the movement uh, in, uh, in Spain? Uh, in Nidados. Exactly, in Nidados, uh, whether it's pro-democratic movement in Turkey, we need to work with everybody to advance our own goals and our own interests. And I'm really looking forward to hear from speakers something about that, besides just analysis of uh, and questions we also need to have some ideas. I agree, I agree that questioning is fine, but we also need to have ideas to move on. Thank you, Jericho. Eto? Yeah, I also, well, I think, I think the question of strategy is key. And, and one of the things that, you know, again, one of the things we can actually think about through feminist theory is Vivek's idea of strategic essentialism. The idea that we, you know, we move back and forth and we think strategically through some of these things. But I think the question of strategic coalitions is, is also key. The other thing I want to say, though, that I also think is really important within the movement and within us, um, is the question of what, sorry I'm citing people, but it's okay, you'll be fine with that. Um, Laila Abulugo calls a radical respect for difference. And I think when we talk about strategy, we talk about coalitions with other movements, that's one thing. When we talk about learning from the history of other movements, that's another thing. When we talk about actually depending upon ourselves, the one thing that I think that we often forget, and I'm thinking about Yelena's point about elitism. I don't think elitism is necessarily the problem, but I think that the lack of a respect for difference among us is the problem. Mm -hmm. So we're very quick, I mean, and again, Yelena, I'm sort of thinking about your statement about heteronormativity and about honest statement, or, to really, so we, we, you know, we're quick to kind of purge out LGBT kind of questions from exactly. the movement. We're very quick to purge, let me just say, people who earn their living from begging or other things from the movement and from our push for respectability. And it's fine for us to push for, I would argue, an elitism or a vanguard, but what we can't do is to then elide all the differences and to push out the people that we think that we may be ashamed of or not in the name of nation building. 
So strategic alliances, absolutely. Bringing everybody in with a radical, and I'm saying a radical respect for difference, essential. So that's my point. Thank you. Nico? Uh, <laughs> okay, Nico. I cannot say Nico and Nadir together. <laughs> so choose, please. Okay, I You know, in the last, so in the last 10 years, <laughs> we, we tried to, you know, to debate, to debate between us, and I always say that uh, the, the women movement is very important to the overall Roma cause, and I mentioned it several times, but it became boring because uh, it will be reflected with what has been done uh, from our Roma women uh, side. I'm not uh, trying to be critical, but, you know, uh, I find it very instrumentalized uh, efforts from the, our Roma women because uh, going back to the 90s when the woman, uh, Roma woman can do it, one of the initiatives in Brussels, uh, I find our women uh, very passive in that, uh, in that initiative. And it was, oh. it, it was lasting like 10 years. But uh, uh, this was a European initiative. First, it was more women can do it, and then women can do it. So uh, yeah, it was a very different And then, through, throughout this initiative, I found uh, find out that uh, the overall Roma movement distanced itself from the Roma movement. I mean, the question was whether they are contributing to Roma cause or to the feminist right and, and, and cause. And this was quite debatable because whatever uh, gender discussions we were raising among us, then all the stuff was reserved only for women rights. And nothing was discussed with, uh, with men activists on the common ground. And uh, my second point is that <coughs> activism should not necessarily lead to, to elitism among, among Roma. Because uh, we have different you know, stages of, of thinking and, and, and uh, ideology among us. And the third one, uh, uh, any information that is uh, leftist feminist. We should also focus uh, or uh, recognize that left ideologies were wrong. Introducing a lot of wrong from <laughs> <laughs> I mean, same as many other uh, as, as, as many other uh, uh, ideologies uh, instrumentalized uh, Roma because they were not able to compete uh, and not to bring our interests. So I, I mean, it was nothing to do with some kind of contradiction in this agreement. But, you know, in overall, I'm against learning from the other. We have to find our way. Because borrowing different models, ideas, or whatever concepts will not solve our problem. This is good. This is the eternal debate among us to clarify our own yards, and then we build up from here. Thank, Thank you, Nadir. Uh, Nicoleta, words. Um, I will do an act of recuperation of memory and history because uh, what is happening today in the room is that it seems that not many of you have involved the past experience of Roma women activists in relation with Roma women and the feminist movements, not only one, because there are many feminist movements. So I will do today an act of recuperation of memory and saying that in order for the uh, to construct a, a, a Roman feminist, it was needed a period of radicalism among Roman feminists in order to define themselves. And that was the period which started in 1999 until 2006. In 2006, 
all of Romania will be in the international network, have stopped working. And this is because we realized that in, the, in this period we also have had a strong fight with feminist movements. No, I don't know. So, um, in the same period of our movement, we had to fight with the races of the feminist mm -hmm. activists, which, which, which was the most, I mean, it was very difficult when you go to a, a, a other social movements and you realize and you, you imagine that they are open-minded and non and tolerant and you find racism in there. So what Romani women movement activists have done during these, these uh, less than 15 years is that they have constructed an anti-racist attitude within some of the feminist movements across Europe and this one in a uh, global movement. So uh, if I look back, I think I can be very proud of what the achievements were in terms of how, if I, I look to Romania today, the feminist group in Romania all have anti-racist attitudes when it comes to Roma. So, which we couldn't find 15 years ago. And they make coalition of Roma. And they react more than some Roma organizations to races of Roma. So, if I go back to Romani movement, um, let me say that that radicalization of Romani women, it was necessary in order to discuss. If, of course, we cannot say we invent the rain when the feminism. We had to deal with uh, uh, room service feminists, which came from uh, black Afro-Americans or black intersectionalities, or other uh, feminist ideologies, which are unfortunately sometimes done by middle white class feminists. So, but what we realized is to provoke in the Romani movement the cultural relations, essentially, when we say Romani culture is not all, is not uh, universal for everybody. The definition of Romani culture and Romani identity is not unique; it's diverse, and it has to be include, It has to include the experience of women in that. And we provoked the Romani movement as well. And I'm sorry, if we are here today in this space speaking about feminism, it's because of that. It's because we have provoked you. So. Um, now what we do is that since 2006 we have felt the, the, the problem we have and the debate is like until where you go with your feminist ideology either is left, right, radical, second wave or otherwise is until where you go and where you stop with the emancipatory discourse and ideologies and actions in order to do not destroy what the dust of Roma identity means today in Europe. It's a dust. It's nothing so so strong. So this it, it's internal debate, which is also my internal personal debate, made me made myself go to the culture, politics of culture, and that's why I'm here I'm today in Roma putting me in the constructing the Roma. So that's because of my feminism. I am in the politics of culture because I do not want to have a Romani pen or a culture which is defined by non-Roma anthropologists, mm -hmm. a romantic anthropologist where the, <laughs> the norms are everywhere and we all have to be like that. I want to participate to a redefining of Romani culture and identity where I have a feminist standpoint. And we recognize what others. So I, I think the Romani women have done a lot in the sense of, of provoking discourses and challenging, but we haven't done enough for the Roman communities. That's true. So now we are in, in the back in the Romani movement. <laughs> and it's an internal debate, really. And that's also. Uh, thank you, Mr. <laughs> I 
have to say that we have quite a long uh, list of uh, uh, people that want to, to put questions. So I would kindly ask you to be very short uh, to the point because we have to give the chance to the panelists to, to react to your question. And also we, we have two more uh, hot topics to, to pursue. Uh, Violeta, then uh, Mirabella, then Julius, then uh, Saimir, uh, Anna Mirga, and Costello. No, <laughs> so, Violetta, please. Okay. Um, I just wanted to highlight the depth of the analysis and the huge intelligence of the women who have spoken here about feminism and just to, to point out when we have women in the room who have such a deep analysis it's really important to listen um, really well and for a long time because it's quite easy to minimize feminism and make it be like I think you said somebody said just about us as women personally, when it's actually a huge political movement. And also, the, in, the essence of women's oppression, I think, is making our issues very small. It's making us and what we think appear very small. So this, the fact that feminism is moving into the Romani movement is a huge deal. It's really easy to underestimate what a big contribution it makes. So I just wanted to say, um, you know, we have some major feminists in the room. We need, it's really good to listen here. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk to, um, I don't know his name. Nadir. Nadir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, you want me to, to uh, say something about Nadir's ideas, not about Nadir. Please. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, he, he is right when he's saying uh, the, about the uh, women, but he's right just on his side, when I said on his side, because he, he met just the Romanoid, Romanoid women. Magneto was using this word. It's, uh, and he's right when he, he's saying this. The, the, uh, but it, he's right on his side, but uh, he didn't meet the other women. He didn't, uh, he, he, he sp he's spoken, when he speaks, he spoke, he spoke about his experience and what he saw. But he doesn't, you have right on, on your side, but you don't have right in totally. Uh, and the, the women are useful and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and the, the last thing is, uh, the, I wanted to mention, now, if, if we are here, my, my opinion, if we are here, we, we are here to find solution, to fight together and to change the situation of Roma, whether LGBT, if, if, even if we are uh, uh, lesbian, if we, even if we, are, if we are gay, even if we are feminism, we have to fight, unite together and fight together to, to change the situation because the situation, there are many people that they don't, they don't realize that uh, from, from here to five years, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to the past, to the Nazis, uh, uh, to, to the past, to, to be, to, to, to be, uh, we, we turn back to the genocide. Is it already here, but we don't see it. It's indirectly, not directly. Thank you, Mira Then, uh, Thomas? Hey. Ah, keep changing what I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but first, first thing important, the action of strong women, Romani women in history, is, as Sheila Robot would say, often hidden from history. We now know who the woman, the name of the woman collaborator of Rudiger, yeah. who was almost forget forgotten. But now we can look back and we can say that Rudiger and his female Romani collaborator on the Romani language provide for us now a realization that the racism of Groma 
um, was not inevitable, was not necessary, could be contested even at that time uh, before 1800. Um, and thanks to Hugh Van Baffer expounding how that could be. Secondly, let's remember Trinity Cooper, an English Romany woman who was the first to demand education for herself and her brothers. It wasn't her brothers who demanded education for her, and that's in 1811. That's more than 200 years ago now. And then she grew up, and in the 1850s, she was someone who publicly defied an abusive husband and shamed him. Um, she should be a feminist hero. Uh, I want to know when we're going to name a school after Trinity Cooper. Um, so, that's not a theoretical correction here. You spoke about the necessity of interests. That takes me back to Weber, who suggested that politics is always an unstable coalition of interest groups and status groups. I think that that's a great truth, that the feminist theory of intersectionality has rediscovered and made clearer for the present day. I think there have been liberatory movements on a world scale over the last 600 years. If we look at when Roma first came to Europe, they were claiming the rights of religious refugees. Gajo scholarship has mocked this. Who are these pseudo pilgrims? What racist Arabs? We need to rediscover the pre-1500 experience of Roma and reimagine it. And again, I pay uh, homage to my, my student and teacher, Adrian Marsh, for doing that. After that, Roma had no option but to be a marginalized part of nation state building. Then, in the 19th century, we see them influenced by Zionism. Right up until the 1950s, the early work of Matthew Maximoff, of Ronald Lee, um, clearly influenced by Zionism. Then, Romani politics is influenced by the anti-colonial movement. As people have rightly said, Fanon influenced Romani leaders in the 50s and 60s. Now, feminism, particularly standpoint theory and now intersectionality, so my question, actually, is it's inevitable as, you know, that feminism and standpoint theory has <coughs> criticized not only the racism, continuing racism of some people who call themselves anti-racists, as though you could just be, decide to be anti-racist, when actually it's very hard work. Um, and, you know, I, I find myself thinking a racist thought every other day. Um, the, the, so my question is, um, it's all very well saying with you, but isn't it the case that actually feminism has still some elements of race, racism and nationalism to criticise from the legacy of the anti-colonial moment of world liberation? Thank you, uh, Professor. I'm very <laughs> insightful. Yeah. So uh, now I think we will have uh, Anna Lina. Okay. So I just have two short comments. One is that uh, I think in this debate, which is very important, it's important to, to differentiate between three levels of the debate that we have. One is that the, the things that already have been said, what can we learn from different movements? Uh, so, so we have to think about what we can learn at the moment. But the other element is what are these the currents of LGBT or feminism within the Roman movement itself? And I think the most important level of in this debate is what are the points of intersection or of shared common interest that we can we can find within those two levels. And then related to the, the feminism, I'd like to share very quickly just the experience of Spain. Uh, the Roma women's movement in Spain has been very strongly influenced by feminism, by the non-Roma women's feminism movement. And this has translated into work on the ground with the Roma women through different types of projects, leadership, capacity building, and so forth, leading to a, a process of, of uh, emancipation of individual uh, Roma women in, in communities as well. 
but this process hasn't been uh, hasn't been done in in fairly with men in our situation. So it's part of the type of friction between men and women, and then you have seen so many people, the women suddenly emancipated, they imagined uh, different ambitions, rights, and different uh, different uh, roles for them in their life, and the men didn't accompany the process of this process. So despite the fact that uh, all the data shows this triple discrimination of allowed men, the data also shows that uh, there's more Roma women in universities than Roma men. Or the very fact that the, the NEPs uh, representing Roma were until the recent elections only women. <coughs> so uh, following this uh, very fashionable Emma Watson he for she campaign uh, that we, many of us may have been following, I would like to ask the men what role they see for themselves within the Roma feminist movement or within the gender, uh, the gender issues and within the Roma movement as such. And this question goes to the men. Thank you, Anna. Costa, uh, very briefly, then we have Sarah and Peter Mona. But very, very short because we exhausted the uh, uh, Can you please use the mic? Because yes, you can use the microphone. Oh, the Should I use the microphone? Or yes. Or? Yeah. I go ahead with the microphone. Oh, we have a long cable today. Yeah. We are three people. I mean, yesterday <laughs> the cable was short, couldn't reach out the, the men's side of the room. Now you make the cable longer. Well, two comments I want to make. One to second what Nadia says. Because I think it's really challenging. What we are having today is the following. We have a feminist movement that came into Roma who was saying, look, you have to integrate the feminist ideology within your movement, somehow build a separate movement. Wait, uh, yeah. Wait, who said this again? Well, no, it's a reality. It's, it's, it's my assessment. In following, in following my friend Nadir uh, comments, then some, another one came and said, look, Roma are also disabled people. You need to build up a movement and a group of supporters of Roma disabled. Then the following year, another one came and said, look, all Roma are poor. You need to move on with the anti-poverty movement and learn from it and join, you know, build up activists that uh, perpetuate the concept of anti-poverty. Then another one came and said, look, Roma are also LGBT people. What about having uh, within the movement another group of LGBT and so on? This is why I'd like to support very much and say, Kant's Nadir's point. We are not seven, eight movements, and it shouldn't be. Maybe, well, sometimes there are strategies to <coughs> divide those people, put them against another. Well, it is my assessment. I have to tell you, I, I, I have been confronted I'm with many feminists saying, no, oh, this is wrong. You men, uh, you are treating the women unequally. It was, wasn't true, because the reality is telling us that more and more women are leading organizations, become academics, uh, encouraged and supported by the men. I, have, I know yeah. why. Because of the men. Yeah. <laughs> because of us. Because you are not able. No, I know. It's because you are not able. No, at the end, at the end, I mean, there should be uh, a clear vision that the movement, the Roma movement, is different than all the others. And maybe there are something that we can learn from other movements, but it shouldn't be that much impact our strategy. Yeah, otherwise it would become four movements, seven movements, LGBT Roma, uh, feminist Roma, and so on. Yeah, it's, it, each one should have a place inside what we call the joint effort of our common goal, yeah, at the end. Otherwise, we will be sitting separately and say, no, this is, this is different. We are Romani women in What? 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 What?
that hot, the, the, the questions are longer than the time for a panelist. So, uh, <laughs> so let, let's give uh, the opportunity to the panelists to, to speak, and I think still I have uh, Peter, Mona, and Sarah that they can uh, uh, raise a, a question. But let, because uh, of yeah, the dynamic, they, they make a lot of notes and they have to answer. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say I'm feeling very comfortable being a leftist feminist because I kind of hear same attitudes among my mainstream male uh, majority academic colleagues at the university. It's, it's kind of the same, so I'm feeling good. Uh, just an idea. Uh, why uh, we imagine um, uh, other social movements as coming from outside, or theories or ideologies coming from outside into the Roma movement. So I, I, I don't see it uh, that, that way. So actually all these ideas uh, articulated around feminist values, LGBT movements values, are coming from inside. So it's not something foreign coming from outside and imposed from from the enemy, that the, the non-Roma enemy. Uh, so this, I guess this is very important to say. Then I would like to uh, connect a little bit Jacob's and Ethel's uh, uh, intervention. Jacob was talking about Romani movement as a matter of interest and politics, and, and Ethel was talking about the need for the res uh, uh, respect of difference within. But I would say. Uh, that this is actually politics of difference and, and there are actually interests within the movement. So this is the politics of negotiating of who we are. Who is us? Is someone coming out and saying, this is us, this is we, and you are coming next and say, uh, no, uh, I'm coming from outside, I'm telling you that uh, you need to integrate. No. If we are all there, we don't need to integrate a foreign element into the pure us, because it's no pure us. So feminism teaches us this, all of us, Roma and non-Roma, and actually this is the political potential of it, right? Because it transcends any differences and class differences. Um, personally, I'm going to do what I did till now, so I am here, I will be always here, and who would need my alliance? Well, I'm happy to serve. <laughs> yeah, if you do it only half a sentence, do it. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I didn't say politics is about interest. I said alliance building is about interest. And what I'm about the wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. I'm so, it is also about values and political strategies. But if we want to think about the alliances across different sectors, across different movements, we also need to represent our own interests. That's what I said. It's right. not across movements, it comes from within. That's yeah, yeah. what I, what I, I said. And I that's the politics of coming from within, negotiating, and that's the need for respect for internal difference. Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, well, <coughs> I actually would like to reflect basically on the on what Nadir and Costa said because to me, unfortunately, this is just um, uh, showing that uh, the women voices are not being listened because. What we were saying uh, is exactly opposite of making a separatist movement within the Roman movement. What we were saying is that we can learn from principles and theories and use it in the Roman movement. And it means that uh, I also reflect on what you said, uh, Nadir, about uh, we have to do in our own way. The, the main thing here is that we don't live in isolation. So it is not 
possible, in my opinion, to be ignorant about what's happening around us. And uh, I don't see the reason why we should not learn from others, not only from feminist movement, as Jelko said, and I completely agree, uh, but also from feminist movement. And uh, I really just don't understand uh, this talk about uh, separatism. Feminists are, I mean, from my own experience, I was often accused uh, that uh, I kind of, that my, my opinions can bring, can somehow ruin uh, unity within the Roman movement. But this is, this is exactly <laughs> opposite what we are trying to do here. Exactly opposite, because we don't respect the diversity, and this is what separates us. Separates us. I just want to be very short uh, regarding the question about culture and cultural characteristics and traditions, because it's a very, very hot topic. I believe we could talk about it for hours. But what is very important, I believe, to understand that culture is not a stable something and traditions are not stable, they are changing because uh, culture is a way we all people adapt to the circumstances and in many cases um, um, keeping old traditions or things perceived as traditions just hinder us from going forward and we can later go into specificities one, I just want to say uh, Thank you. Uh, very short, please. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm afraid that you can move on it. I'm conscious as a student before. As a non-tech but just want to share some, some of what I've learned from working with key women gypsy activists in Britain uh, inviting a, a chapter about their activism and, and women are at the forefront, oh, sorry, <laughs> women are at, at the forefront of gypsy tribal organisations in the UK. Um, and I, I just want to um, share some reflections and then probably, you know, we can develop further, but about their, the use, their use of identity, um, of cultural identity and gender. Um, because um, their position as women was very important. They came to be activists um, out of very intense experiences of discrimination um, as gypsies, often around planning commission sites. Um, and their, their position of women in then moving forward to support other people was important because often um, women who were facing the daily struggles at open planning sites would share things more with them. Um, but it was also complicated because they, they were They've, they've moved beyond some of the restrictions that can be perceived, the culture can be perceived as placing on women. And in fact, um, the, this particular group of women have all, and in some cases strategically, married non gypsies and non gypsy men who supported their work. Um, but, um, I mean, they're, they're, so their they're, they're gender is, is very important within their activism, but it's all, they've also kind of moved outside what is sometimes perceived as the normal position where women. Some uh, one talked about being put on a pedestal, um, and age was important in that as well. She was an older woman, um, but they I mean, you know, feminism talks about uh, mutual support and so on. We can't, you know, non, non have after relationship. Mutual support is really important there, and. I mean, burnout is a huge issue. They've just got huge workloads, these women. So the mutual support is very important. And that also, um, and also the openness to, to alliances and federations, and some of them have particularly worked across, as we've been talked about in this um, workshop so far, worked across issues, like housing issues affecting other poor people, um, which then kind of feeds back into them. So I'll stop there, because I know you don't want to go longer, but... Um, Uh, thank you. Because Nadif's uh, name was, met, uh, was mentioned several times, I give him half a minute to, to reply. Very short. <laughs> 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 okay, so. 
No, no. Without mic, but how no, no. can please. you use the mic, please? We can not the okay. uh, But he can come. He can come in front. <laughs> come in the agora. <laughs> Okay, Daddy, please. Thank you, Mr. Uh, no, maybe I was, I'm not that trying to justify, but I was intentionally provocative on this issue because, uh, in overall, not on, on only on male or female issues or whatever uh, different uh, differences we have among us, I think that we have too much democracy and, uh, and, and Are you uh, some kind of, of anarchy among us. Because if we want to achieve some common goals, what, where we really want to move as a movement or whatever, you know, ideology. I mean, we have to put some, some regulations in order among us. Because today, we have such kind of opportunism among us that today at local elections in Hungary, we have Roma women at the yoga place. And men. And men as well. It's a good thing or bad thing? I'm not Hungarian to, to, to do it, to, to, to judge it, you know. Is it a good thing or bad thing? For me, it's, it's, it's a bad thing. Because, because, yeah, we because mean, they are killing us. They are the right I mean, yes. you, you get the point, whatever you want. Uh, thank you, Nadine. So, the, the next uh, session, we will uh, start it with a very short movie. Uh, okay. Can I speak first? <laughs> no, no, it's, it, uh, this is how we... we, we okay, then ladies first. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, unimaginable to talk about Romanian women 
and the fact that they suffer multiple discrimination. Uh, and uh, it was uh, Romani women themselves who introduced the topic and uh, pushed for the inclusion of Romani women's rights on the movement and the Roma rights uh, of the, the women's movement and the Roma rights for the people of the gender. Uh, yeah. And it's the same regarding sexual orientation, and it's really important to think about and to, to think actually uh, to experience of Roma as you could see, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, to think about uh, intersectionality of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, classism, or other forms of discrimination. Uh, and uh, I have some, uh, you can say, radical idea uh, that I wrote and I value you my text. Uh, and you wrote it, I hope that is right. Uh, it's about a patriarchal, pa patriarchal um, system that uh, we are uh, all living that, and I believe that you know what we get. Uh, but, um, I don't believe that uh, patriarchal uh, it's uh, just uh, became uh, just uh, on uh, male domination uh, over women. It's also uh, domination on uh, one group of men over another group of men. That means white men are dominant over uh, over uh, black over Roma men over uh, non heterosexual men. And I, I really believe that uh, we have included uh, that uh, thinking uh, in order to, uh, to, to, to think about uh, Roman women. Because uh, it's not uh, only that we are suffering from uh, racism. Racism is uh, just, um, uh, just uh, a little part of patriarchy and of capitalism. Uh, and also, uh, uh, there is uh, 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 internal, yeah, external social forces acting to preserve the current status quo, uh, and that they are immensely strong, and uh, uh, Romani uh, LGBT, especially uh, Romani lesbians, uh, uh, face violence, isolation, and oppressive traditional practices. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, moreover, Romani community serves both as direct and symbolic oppressors. Uh, direct because they strive to preserve the system system, the system system between uh, each uh, localized Romani community and symbolic uh, because the, the, the structure actually uh, they want to preserve are uh, a structure of white male heterosexual order. Uh, so uh, being uh, uh, to be uh, uh, Roma and not to be heterosexual, to be woman uh, and to be a lesbian, uh, Roma lesbian, uh, it's uh, uh, actually uh, uh, yes, uh, to convert it to, 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 uh, to the order, to the male wild, uh, white uh, uh, order that we are living. And uh, we must uh, think about. Um, our uh, backgrounds, uh, we are uh, coming from different uh, uh, backgrounds. Uh, some of us represent uh, neoliberal structure, we, some of us work for, uh, works for uh, 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 donors organizations, some of us are from uh, uh, grassroots uh, organizations or communities. Uh, and uh, because of that background, we must admit that we have uh, also differences among us. And maybe I have differences in my thinking with Nadir and Jericho because we are not from the same background. Uh, and uh, I'm really, uh, I really, I, uh, I, 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 I need to say, and I'm not sure what, what why is that, that nobody. Uh, spoke here uh, about one word uh, that I mentioned, uh, uh, the mentioned the word is solidarity, and it's not uh, interest. I really think that we we we, we not uh, we, we, we we mustn't uh, be drive by uh, interest because uh, not just neoliberal, but it's because uh, interest uh, we, 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 we will support some someone or some movement 
uh, at the one point and after the .net. It's not, it's not, it's not, so it, it's not the, 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 the point uh, in any movement. The solidarity is the, the key word, actually. So uh, we, we have to think about uh, uh, how to support other, because the Roma community, uh, as you said, the Roma, the Roma community is not homogenous, and we cannot be uh, the same in order to have one movement. We don't need, if, if we can fit one movement, then we don't need one movement. movement. We need more movements. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, we, uh, we have to think about solidarity and how to support. And I really, really mean thank you, thank you, and I really, uh, I, I cannot understand, as I, I don't understand, can't understand right means uh, in political and uh, fascism uh, with their presence still, uh, but uh, I cannot understand uh, the, 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 the fear of the activists, uh, of differences, of uh, diversity, and of. Um, uh, Thank you very much. With the radicalists, we shouldn't be radicalists, yes? To cut the mic. Please. Right. Uh, don't you mind if I stand up because my chair is really uncomfortable at night and I can't see the people. So I just want to stand up. I'm going to be so short because I came here as an activist and not a researcher. So I didn't investigate this topic so deeply, but they told me I have two minutes and maybe if I can, I can provocate the people. So I'm gonna try, but after that we will see that one is successful or, or not. So my topic uh, was, and I was interested in the social movement, especially per the Roma uh, movement, because I declare myself as a Roma activist. But somehow I involved also in the LGBT movement but as an aroma activist uh, first. And for me it was so interesting how the, how the emotions are so similar to this. And also, I was thinking about it, why we cannot learn about the LGBT movement. I know that it's so fashionable all the time to speaking about the Afro-American civil movement in the USA, but maybe it's so far away, so we can learn something from somebody who are working in the same city and they have the same aim as, as, as we have. And I was thinking about that there is a huge uh, emotion capital, but I think the Roma social movements are not, they, they don't use it. And the gays and the LGBT groups can operate really good with these emotions. Because the, the LGBT people often feel themselves shame. And after this shame is somehow converted by anger. And after the anger is a pride. So I see this uh, uh, circle that is it's, it's coming, coming in this way. And also what uh, for me uh, was really interesting that, that last year in Budapest, first time was organized the Roma Pride. So this movement was not kind of movement that that the Roma people want to achieve something directly. No, they just want to uh, give more pride to the Roma people, to build a little bit of self-respect. Um, and it also shows some similarities, because if you are hiding, if you are hiding yourself, the hiding is create shame, and the public displays are create pride. And Maybe it's just one day of the year. And I can tell you that, for example, I participated in the, in the gay pride in Budapest, and it was just a couple of hours. But these couple of hours gave me strength, for example, to speak in front of you about my gay identity. And for me, it's not something that I can compare with my Roma identity and with my gay identity, because I'm also gay and also Roma. Uh, so it's not a problem. <laughs> And also, there was a video that I was involved in, and I want to show you that as an example of the, of the cooperation. And I'm sure that there are some things that I also wanted to share, but I think it was two minutes, so I need to throw the others. And uh, the video is going to be in Hungarian, but you can see the lyrics. So you can read it. I make it bigger and also the subtitle. 
No. <coughs> Do you have an internet connection with it? It thinks because it's from here too. Ah, uh, that one, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, it's gonna be just one minute. Actually, it's longer to play. Egyetemi hallgató vagyok, Roma aktivista. Legtöbbször a fiúknak teszem, és nekem is ők. Származásom és szexuális orientációm miatt többször sem élem meg a kisebbségi léthelyzetet. Saját bőrömet tapasztalom a folytogató sztereotípiákat, a magas előítéleteket, és a mások által kötelező elejövő normákhoz való igazodása kényszerét. Egy ember vagyok, aki hisz abban, hogy a jog és esélyegyenlőség melletti kiállás mindannyiunk szabadságáról szól. Aki az emberek sokféleségében örömteli lehetőséget van. Aki a gyűlöletkeltés helyett az odafordulást és az elfogadást választja, és erre biztos másokat is. Aki tudja, hogy értékei másokéval közösek. Aki tudja, hogy nincs egyedül. Lass is le te is egy bizonyítra. És gondolj arra, hogy milyen világban szeretnél. Légy ide mellé, ha hiszel a szolidaritás fontosságát. Ha visszautasítod azt, hogy a föld alatt kelljen szórakoznod, és a nép alatt között élnek. Csatlakozz, ha úgy gondolod, hogy a nőknek, a roma, és az LMBTQ embereknek van helye a társadalomban. A nőgyűlöletnek, a rasszizmusnak, a homofóbiának és a transfóbiának viszont nincs. Induljunk el és tegyünk ezért egy dolog. Most és minden nap. LGBT issue and uh, uh, feminist or feminist uh, issue because uh, we are really starting. Uh, our organization called ARA uh, is only two years and we are the only one organization, Roma LGBT organization in Europe, maybe in the world, I don't know. And uh, we have a lot of a lot of jobs, a lot of work, but uh, we have one, no, not only one problem, we have a lot of problems, but one of most problems, what I see, is that we don't have positive heroes. Not only one hero, hero. not only one, but we must have 20, 30, 40, 50, because only one is, is nothing. Uh, for example, here, who is Roma? Who is women? Women. 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 Are you woman? Who is gay? This is our LGBT, this is our, the, our uh, really big problem because we have a lot of LGBT in the Roma community but only few are open and if they are open only in their community, in their for family, for friends, but not open for all the world. So if we organize now this year in Prague, uh, in for gay pride, uh, Roma carriage care. It was really hard to put on this car uh, some Roma who say I am gay, I am transgender, I am bisexual. But we did. 
and uh, we have from we got a lot of Roma artists who don't uh, who doesn't be LGBT but they are all the artists they are open they are uh, famous Roma in Czech Republic so they uh, help us uh, we have uh, Roma LGBT online consulting for uh, not only for LGBT but for parents who, who want uh, to help uh, and my mother must my mother must uh, uh, speak with other parents because it's for me it's better that uh, speak with par parents parents too, than me. Um, other we did this uh, year first Roma LGBT conference for Czech and uh, Slovak Roma, and uh, next year we want uh, to uh, do international Roma. Uh, LGBT conference because we have really big problem. We don't have like uh, Roma women networking. Uh, networking, you must have money for networking. So, but we don't have uh, in Roma Foundation in all other foundation special money for Roma LGBT. Uh, this was the same situation for Roma women. It was the same, I don't know, 10 years ago, maybe 5 years ago. It was the same. It wasn't, wasn't uh, money for only Roma women. Now we have the uh, uh, same situation uh, with Roma LGBT. We don't have money for only for Roma LGBT. Uh, so, uh, this is our problem. Our uh, other problem that uh, we have triple discriminated, like Roma, like gays or lesbian, and like gays or lesbian in Roma community. And this is we must do uh, re repair, <laughs> yeah. uh, fix because not only general Roma, but we have Roma politicians. We have Roma. Uh, we have Roma leaders, but they are homophobic too. Yeah. Uh, I speak now in, about Czech Republic, but they are homophobic too. They know that they can can be homophobic publicly, but they are homophobic in uh, in person. So uh, this is our big problem and. Other, sorry, I must use <laughs> um, Roma LGBT are from uh, Roma families excommunicated, uh, and it is Ola Roma and Sinti Roma uh, in Czech Republic. So that's why we have flat for them. Uh, if uh, somebody excommunicated uh, him or her, they can uh, call us or wrote us and we uh, give them this letter. And we have a contract with KFC, McDonald's, because this is a uh, uh, company where can, uh, where can work people without education, so they give them first their first job. Uh, and one more, sorry. Roma LGBT uh, community is really strong for Roma community in general because our research in Czech Republic uh, show us that, for example, uh, sorry. <coughs> This first is Roma uh, in general. And uh, the black one is educated Roma. Uh, more than elementary school. More than elementary school. This two 
is uh, Roma LGBT, and the black one is without education. So it means only elementary school. So we have really educated Roma LGBT community in Czech Republic, and they can help uh, Roma uh, community in general. So this is so Roma LGBT is really really strong for. Uh, Roma community and helpful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, David. Then we have uh, Dejo Mate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I made a presentation. Uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, intersection between Roma and, sorry, it's LGBTIQA, <laughs> community. And, uh, um, with that, I'd like to reflect on my sentence, what I said uh, It was that uh, men and women and what else is what else yes, can be LGBTIQA. Um, yes. Um, I would like to start with uh, two quotations, actually. Uh, which, uh, yeah, this presentation for this topic is my PhD topic, so I just really start and I think it's really, really um, can be useful in the future. So uh, the, the quotation is that we virtually don't see ourselves in positive or, or natural images. We always see ourselves reflected in negative images. This, I think, on the one hand, leads to self-hatred, and another result of it, it is that we don't have enough self-confidence. We never see ourselves reflected in a positive way. We only ever see the social documentary pictures at, at which I'm personally very angry. This adds a lot neg more negative things than positive. This quotation from one LGBTQA Roma man who was studied at uh, Central Europe University. Here is one other quotation for one Roma woman uh, from Alta University. And she told, my first experience when I recognized that I'm different as the others, others was in the female shower in the high school. Um, yeah, here I just um, start thinking about for for few terms of uh, who define the Roma and what does it mean the sexual orientation, but I think that we can uh, just skip this because we know the terms that what is in the sexual orientation hopefully and and um, and who defines the Roma. Uh, I I planned or yeah I tried to collect the differences and the similarities between uh, so the intersection between Roma LGBTQIA people and my results yeah, it's not the main result, but or end result, but um, uh, the LGBT community part, the, the main result, the, the, the LGBT community part from the beginning to show and write them on history. And they had, had the opportunity to work together with the majority and prove, make visibility stronger than history, identity, and movements. Uh, and the Roma, in the Roma uh, part of the Roma, uh, the Roma community, the representation based on grievances, which is not controlled and defined by the members of the group. These are the main differences between LGBT and, and Roma community, I think, creating the history and, and their own identity or, or self-identification. Uh, here are some, some similarities what I influenced what I, what I collected, I think that the, one of the most important uh, these two communities, they influenced and judged with xenophobic prejudices and stereotypical thinking, of course, by the major victim. And, um, and human uh, similarities as well, that uh, the two groups, they recognized and started the defense um, and they, they have a serious identity development stages. Both communities had started usually during the teenage years, uh, early 20s. But in LGBTIQ 
uh, community, the defensive process started aged at uh, of 1415 because the height of transsexual orientation against Roma community when they facing first time with differency. This is usually in the education system when they're going to school at age at six, seven. Uh, also, similarities between them. Uh, the Roma LGBTIQ person has multiplied defensive, but but uh, David thought because of sexual orientation and ethnic origin. Uh, the process of expanding uh, energy to deny and minimize feelings has negative consequences for overall, overall um, emotional health. Uh, I think the main similarities for both communities that uh, they have intensified pressure to prove themselves they, because they think that they are not good enough and it's present in them everyday life. Uh, that's why uh, the number is so high in uh, Roma educated graduate people in LGBTIQ people. Uh, LGBTIQ people. Uh, they play, if they have something unsuccessful, they blame themselves for the failures. And what I find that these people, these LGBTIQ Roma people, they have a new identity, what is not majority and not minority identity, this is something between them, but I don't know exactly what is this because how David told the Roma community um, let's say they don't really accept, but yeah, it's a stereotyping. But it's so hard to accept the own community, the Roman LGBTQ people, and and uh, because they are between the majority and minority. So that's that one. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Marco, because the Martin is uh, not here. Let's take a couple of questions, but very, very short. So, Martin, but let's start. Sorry, So... Do you want me to talk? Uh, yeah, because I, I think I then we'll, we'll get the, the series of questions at the end. Sorry, then. So, please. Okay. Uh, okay. Apologies for that. Uh, I needed to create my own six comfort break as we're not having an organised one. Um, I've only got three minutes and I'll try and stick to that. Uh, I'm very grateful to the organisers for inviting me here today to speak with you because it's here in Budapest that I began my research as a political science scientist on the politics of Roma some 20 years ago. Um, since then I've moved along to try and Work, try and theorise the whole phenomenon of Roman politics, but I want to stick today to uh, going back to 20 years. At that time, uh, my conclusion of my original research was that there was a fundamental problem with the uh, politicisation of Roman identity, and that if Hungary continued to pursue the promotion of Roma difference without also addressing the problems of inequality and discrimination and marginalisation, that it would actually produce an increasingly dysfunctional pro politics which was prone to increasing political <coughs> crisis. And I would say that over the last 20 years, that that's really what has happened here. You need to remember that Hungary has been the state that has done most to promote Roma identity politics. There are more elected Roman representatives in Hungary than in the rest of the world combined. Hungary was the first post-communist state to introduce comprehensive national Roma integration policies. It was a leading state on the Roma decade and it was also the state that brought through the EU Roma framework uh, in 2011, I believe, the Hungarian presidency. At the same time, we can see that particularly on the economic sphere and housing and things like that, that the situation is either stagnated over 20 years or has actually deteriorated, but the political conditions themselves have worsened considerably. We've had the Garda, we've had the serial killings, we've had Jobbik in the far right, which according to recent opinion polls is now the second most popular country, popular party in the country. Doesn't mean that nothing good has happened over the last 20 years at all, but we do need to focus on the negative 
because it's, it's conflicts that lead to gross human rights abuses, not success and harmony. One of the basic conclusions of looking at how uh, the Roman, politi Roman identity has been politicised is to see that this is primarily a politicisation process which is, which is developed by elites, not by Roman people. Roman people have various roles within this, and they're quite minor, minor roles and sometimes just to legitimise what elites are doing. The reason for this, I think, is that um, Roma has become, why, why Roman politics is primarily symbolic rather than substantive, particularly in the policy arena, is that um, it brings into scope some fundamental ideological problems of the system that we have. Uh, free market, introduction of free market to this region was meant to increase wealth because it was meant to be a superior system and yet it has produced mass and sustained poverty which cannot be ignored. The rule of law that was introduced in, in, in 1990 was meant to uh, make sure that everyone was treated equally, but actually the post-communist system has created a, a new functionality for prejudice and discrimination. And democracy was meant to create fairness and, and political opportunity, but it just seems to have actually marginalised a whole lot of different uh, political interests within the society, including the interests of, of many Roman people. Hence, the politicisation of public discourse as a way of managing these apparent contradictions and failures of the wider system. So two points I really want to make. I mean, one, 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 though I should preface this by saying political conditions in different countries and different places vary enormously. And Hungary, I think, is particularly, has particular challenges, uh, particularly in the nature of the changing understanding of Hungarian identity. But it's very much, I think, the centre of the storm and a bit of a kind of uh, indicator of where things can go into the future. <clears throat> Two points I want to make is that after 20 years, um, there's obviously a great deal of frustration and concern and anxiety about the way the political conditions are going. There is some optimism, but there's also a fair amount of pessimism, and I think we've heard this in the room as well. Increasingly, and it's cropped up today, it cropped up in a lot of national debates, in particular it's cropped up in recent debates around the Bulgarian election, there is this strong perception of the strength of anti-Roma racism within these societies and how that filters through not just within communities and political parties but within institutional systems and things like that. And it becomes seen as an almost overwhelming challenge to deal with. <coughs> what I'd like to say is I think that that's the struggle against racism is absolutely fundamental. It's also particularly complicated and difficult, I would, I would argue, in relationship to Roma. And there's a lot of work that academics and activists need to do into the future to try and really refine what we mean about race and racism in relationship to Roma. However, the point I want to emphasise is that you, have a, you face a fundamental challenge of how to deal with your identity politics of what is effectively a low status and stigmatic and unpopular identity out there and to challenge the negative views that exist within wider society about Roma but in a way in which wider society can understand it and can get it and can do something about it. At the end of the day the political influence of Roma will not be a product of Roma people themselves, a product of the alliances and support that other Roma, the Roma people and their representatives and their interests have. It's going to be about the people out there that you need to convince to get on your side, to stop being hostile and then become supportive. And that is a real challenge and hopefully that's something we might be able to discuss and debate. The other point is that because of the deteriorating political circumstances and the way that the right of politics of Roma is, is developing, particularly internationally, there, it's, it's not surprising that people wish to see organisations, particularly such as the um, EU, coming in and helping out and supporting people in their discussions that, uh, and their arguments that they're having uh, within national situations. But if we allow this discourse to develop in the wrong way, and get to the stage of the argument whereby it becomes accepted that countries like Hungary or Czech Republic or Bulgaria are just so racist that they cannot be reformed 
and that we cannot expect these institutions and these societies to be able to address Roma people as equal citizens within their, within their societies, that the call goes up to say, well, let's find alternative governance structures. And this, I would argue, is the current debate, and this debate will go on for the next few years now, about whether the emphasis should be on national governance and citizenship or whether that breaks down and we move towards a discourse which moves towards the creation of some kind of European or transnational Euro-Roma governance systems. The, Roma, uh, the European Roma Institute is a proposal along those lines, for example. We have the Roma Travellers Forum already set up within the Council of Europe. There are suggestions about a Roma finance facility for centralising and distributing EU funds. Um, this is a fundamental question I think that Roma activism needs to um, address over the next few years. It doesn't mean there's one answer, or one right answer, or one wrong answer, but there's a lot at stake in this, this issue, and I would argue that ultimately, no matter how difficult it is, your only real salvation <coughs> comes from winning support, of, or rather asserting your citizenship, and winning support of the, your neighbours and fellow citizens in society. As things do, do deteriorate. The real danger is that at some point, countries like, societies like Hungary will have the question put to them, what do we do with the Roma? And we have to get at that stage to ensure that there are enough people in this society who give the right answer to that question and are able to resist and overcome those people who we know out there who want to give the wrong answer. Thank you. Thank you. I have again a very, very long list. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Sheriko will be the first, but because he was speaking, I will ask him to, to be short, please. No, I just want to clarify the word interest, to clarify what it means. Because uh, people are calling uh, and relating to, to what I said without understanding. And I think this is where yet another uh, uh, indication that we don't talk enough to understand maybe the same meaning we have with describing it by different words. When I say interest, I'm speaking about uh, interest of advancing equality, interest of advancing uh, uh, educational trauma, interest of advancing women's rights. So all these are interests for, for which I would uh, look through uh, uh, creating political alliances and coalitions. It doesn't mean financial interest. And you know, I hear here and there neoliberalism, neoliberalism, and I think it's also a, 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 too, too superficial to label uh, ideas of people just like mentioning neoliberalism is bad. And I think it also indicates a conformity in which we are, conformity of being in civil society. And just because we are in civil society, just because we are Roma, just because we are women, we are the right one. We are the one of our values. We are the moral one, we are the ethical one, and we can preach to everybody else. That's why, because of that conformism, civil society voices uh, who are based on some uh, uh, values that we preach to ourselves, nobody else listens. And that's why the dominant politics is the, you remain without values and remain only on interests. Because we, we talk to ourselves and we are comfortable in, in uh, looking at ourselves only as being the right one. Thank you, Jericho. It's Florine, and I wanted this part of the room also to contribute. Um, assisting to this uh, debate, I realized something that uh, uh, now we, as uh, I don't know, people involved in this Roma movement, uh, we are in a big danger. The danger is to start to worship to the God which is called human rights as a contra-reaction to the European Commission, which is more promoting inclusion and inclusion, and uh, to less uh, human rights. We, uh, Roma, I don't know, activists, experts, and no Roma activists and experts, we start to worship to this God, which is human rights, and the danger here is to, uh, to confuse the things, uh, to associate uh, LGBT and uh, uh, feminism with Roma movement, 
And the uh, European Commission already started this because uh, if you look at the strategy for disabled people, for example, it's basically copy-paste uh, for Roma too, only that they replaced Roma with disabled people. So I think things should be separated and uh, uh, because I think the risk is that uh, LGBT and feminist movement will somehow accaparate, uh, I don't know if it's an English word, accaparate uh, Roma movement and then we will create confusion and uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, association. And I think, uh, yes, uh, I saw here that uh, feminists and uh, LGBT people, I mean uh, activists, uh, are more uh, active and uh, solidar with each other and, uh, we ro and even more motivated than uh, uh, others and I think uh, this is the danger. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Marie. It's uh, Peter Molnar. Then uh, I have Saimir, Bill. A friend told me a story some years ago. She was at the major Hungarian University in Budapest, and her skin is a Big dark hair than usually people in Hungary has their skin, have their skin, and then so her boss, a man at one point, managed to ask her, "Do you belong to the minority?" And then she responded, "No, I belong to the other minority because she's partly Jewish Hungarian." So, and I wanted to raise this that what about being in alliance with what seems to be a natural ally? Uh, at least in Hungary, the large Jewish Hungarian population, mostly uh, in Budapest, living in Budapest, as the two victims of the Holocaust are the Roma people and the Jewish people. So it seems to me that there could be more focus on supporting uh, events that are mostly about uh, about the situation of Roma people and anti-Roma prejudice and discrimination and events that are about anti-Semitism and of course with other coalition partners. So I just wanted to raise this, what do you think about this? Thank you. Uh, would you mind if I give 30 seconds to Agi and then you will be? Please. Because a lot of men speak, so we have to balance. <laughs> it seems to me that we missed the way and we took together the really different uh, things. The one thing is that we have uh, identities. Sexual identity is one of those. But the national identity, it's a totally other thing. It means not that we cannot learn from each other, of course. The other one, to uh, Martin Kovac. It seems to me that there is one very, very important thing what you forgot from your analysis regarding Hungary. The so-called Roma question during the communism and until today, first of all, for different governments, was national security question. It means, even though the well-educated Roma who came from Roma communities from their own, not sponsored, not paid, but as a natural development, and built before the political exchange their own crisis <coughs> and were fighting for Roma interests, for democracy, for freedom. Let's say, as we uh, established the anti ghetto committee in Mishkolz, which was the very first success of opposite politics. And we were common. It was initiated, led, made, first of all, for, uh, by Roma, but joined also from political opposite. 
We were at that time in politics as much respected as the alternative political parties at home and in, and in abroad. And you can ask what happened that we lost those positions because it was very, very clear that what the Roma Caripe and the non-Roma who were also involved in Caripe have their own so-called Roma thesis. We offer this thesis to all the political parties and ask them who wants to realize from those cases anything. What does it mean? It was a political fight on the same basis as all the other alternative parties or the freedom uh, born parties. And we were one very characteristic part of it. We don't want to establish a political party. It was the chance, because Pralipe had such a respect in Hungary, between the Roma, between the Gaggi, in abroad. No one step remained. This one, the last one. Why? Because we were speaking about freedom and democracy, and the political parties had to have their own ideology. The ideology, what we had, it was in uh, free democrats, it was also on conservative parties, a mishmash. Because from one side, we are very conservative, as we don't want to lose our traditions. From other side, we are very, very, how to say, devoted to liberalism and to modernity. And this is not in conflict in us personally and in Roma politics or policy as a movement. But see, and, and you have to see, at that moment, as we don't want to establish a political party, the governments, even the new, continue the old Roma policy. The most or the stronger we were, the most they put into the opposite side Roma as a pocket. And until today, you see the same behavior as there are Roma who try to represent the interest of equality, democracy, freedom, to be involved in the society, okay, who are able to fight for emancipation. The most the different government put into the kilo <laughs> into the into the Roma pocket who are both for money. <laughs> Thank you, Adi. Bill. Uh, first, I have two points on um, neoliberalism and then LGBT. I want to expand on what Joko said because I think it's too easy to just say neoliberalism this is a problem and we need to hold ourselves up to a higher standard if we want to call ourselves intellectuals, if we want to call ourselves activists. I think when you privatize housing and it ends up causing problems for certain groups, it's not an act of privatization or economics that is the problem, it's corruption. So it is not the economic system, but it's the corruption that is behind it. And we need to keep a distinction between that if we're going to criticize economics or financial arguments versus social arguments in order for us to be more credible as well. Uh, secondly, as far as uh, the LGBT question is concerned, 
Uh, I'll talk to all of you privately later. Just want to let you know I'm available. Any conference you want to go to, I want to support you. Whatever, whatever we'll talk. But in terms of how we form alliances, uh, I think it's absolutely clear that it's not a question of dividing ourselves, but contributing towards the greater whole. And if we're looking for alliances, absolutely. Uh, I don't understand why people would be offended when we want to create alliances, whether it's handicapped people, LGBT people, or Jewish people, because we all died in the concentration camps together. It's a natural alliance. There's nothing wrong with that. And we are a national, a nationality or an ethnicity. Yes, it's different, but we can be, we have multiple identities. So I, I don't see any issue there, and I think we need to open up ourselves to, to, to these possibilities, because when I lived in Prague, I moved from the U.S. to Prague in 1992 as an American, young American, uh, didn't really, uh, let's say I was in the closet as a gay person in the U.S., came to Prague, I was in the closet as a Roma person, because I didn't tell anybody I was Roma. That's what my mother taught me to do. And that's how I lived there, and after eight years I said, I'm fed up with this, and I'm not in the closet anymore uh, as a Roma person, I'm not in the closet anymore as a gay person. That doesn't mean I advertise this to everybody everywhere I go, because there's a time and a place for everything. But it's a very personal choice for Roma, who can hide their identity, and for gay people who can hide their identity, to whom and when and where they reveal it. And you need to have a safe environment in order to come out and help and pull your, put 100% of your engagement forward. The, the chief advisor to Martin Luther King was a gay person. His name was... Bayer Bayer Bayer, yeah. Yes. Organized national, national He was the political strategist for the civil rights movement in the US. And a lot of people don't know this because he was hidden from the public view because it was not fashionable in the 60s to be gay. He was actually in prison. So I, can I just say this is it's not just that it wasn't fashionable, it's really important to know that he was he was in prison for deviancy. So he was actually in prison because he was gay, but he was the chief strategist of the civil rights movement. He was also a former a former communist in the nineteen twenties as well. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. So, uh, Yulu is very short, yeah. then Kanya, okay. uh, then uh, Saimir, uh, yeah. Dayan, and Valeri. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then, uh, we have the last word. Some, some inside information that I try somehow to connect to <coughs> some of uh, our friends here. Um, uh, in the group, in our uh, group of the organizers, we had an agreement that uh, we need to talk about, uh, to have a panel on other rights-based movements. And we wanted to learn. We didn't know for nationality movements, yeah, asylum is not all this. We went because we are closer somehow in our minds. And uh, we thought that this will bring challenge that we have also to learn in general. Now, personally, I did some mistakes somehow that I have to repair. Five years ago, I uh, wrote a critique of different strategies employed by uh, Roma organizations. And one of uh, the critique was um, of the human rights discourse. And somehow, uh, I never got back to that. And people misinterpreted that. And misunderstood and miscited me. And I think uh, I have to clarify that. By criticizing the human rights discourse, I'm not against it, I am for it. And here it comes. Yesterday, somehow, my friend Jellico, I was a bit surprised to hear when he said, I'm not talking about rights, but I talk about uh, interest, power, yeah, and so on. Well, I, I like power and interest. <laughs> uh, as, a political, as a political scientist, I'm concerned with that. But I'm also concerned how we limit power, how we control power. And in order to do that, we need a rights discourse. And the human rights discourse is, up to now, the best instrument we have so far. We are unable to build institutions to control power. So I'm more concerned how we control power. It doesn't matter how big that power it is and how small. I think we still have to focus on rights. To our fellow uh, colleagues here who express different point of views, I, I, I want to, to, to say something that uh, too often, Roma activists 
are reproducing the same discourse and behavior that we see on the uh, majority population to our trauma. They learn some nice formulas, they go, they repeat, ha ha ha, everybody is happy, <laughs> but no meaning. And somehow when it comes to feminism, we are, uh, uh, somehow I put myself also here just to make clear that I'm also, I still share the, the objectives of Roma activists. Activist. But we are too often in the trap of reproducing the same discourse. Oh, Roma women face multiple discrimination, blah, blah, blah. But we don't go deeper into this. We do not frame it as a matter of social justice. And otherwise, we reproduce the same behavior to our Roma yeah, from the mainstream politicians. And we do the same here when it comes to LGBT and others, disability movement. We are far away, separate but equal. Yeah. How the hell is that? How about you know working together to achieve a, you know something that is common to all these kind of movements? And that's the biggest challenge. I think we do a, 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 a huge mistake by trying to separate ourselves from this. We are also stigmatized, yeah, and our identity is stigmatized, like that of LGBT, yeah, like that, that of disability, and we have more in common than separating ourselves. But for political purposes, we do have to work together. We are, well, I call it politically insular minority. Whoever wants to play with us, they can play because we lack that kind of power to be a significant player in many of these societies. Okay, so we need again. coalitions. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, Katya, very short. Okay, I will be short. <laughs> So on, on that very note, and I just wanted to comment. Oh, sh it's okay. <laughs> no, I'm very uncomfortable. So um, I just wanted to comment on, on a, I think, on the destructive flavor of some of the conversation that was happening here. Because feminism, as an ideology, uh, does not seek to exclude anybody. And I think this is the direction even this very small group has taken. And to me, it was a little bit puzzling why. And also, I do find it extremely destructive because feminism understands a structure that we live in as unfair, and it's unfair towards uh, a certain set, a group. And so in order to mitigate that unfairness within the structure, we have to Set, have a discourse that is not excluding anybody and basically why we're not building coalitions is because many of these discourses see the focus point as that group and everybody else is, you know, we finger point and that's not correct and this is how instead of building coalitions we are earning enemies or not even enemies, sometimes just having people turn your back uh, at the movement. So I think this is the very important thing that we need to start doing and maybe through discourse is one way and then that discourse can be institutionalized and built into the power structure, etc. And from that it is more of a holistic approach to marginalization, discrimination, uh, lacking democracy, whatever else, in which everybody can participate and nobody's excluded, you know, through these ideologies that do not mean to be exclusionary. Uh, Saimir, then uh, Dea and Valerie, and then I will give to the panelists one minute for each. You can pass if you want. Thank you, Marius. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I will start with a quotation of a poet that I'm sure most of you don't know. His name was Milos Djerz Nikola, also called Mijeni, Albanian poet of the beginning of the 20th century. He said, past the Occident should re refrain from selling to us its dirty and old sh uh, sockets for being modernity. <laughs> now, uh, where we are? We are speaking about intersectionality, which is a very interesting concept, for instance, but we are not... How, how, I, I'm wondering how this concept does not push us to think also about another one which is related to it, which is the multidimensionality of the, the one's in, uh, identity. No one is hindered is in his gay identity, for instance, uh, because of the fact that he is a Roman person. And of being 
being a wrong does not uh, exclude being a gay. I, I reward it. It, it, is not, it. it is not about how you are perceived by the others, but you can be both. You can, and, and even more, and no, no person is one single thing. Now, in our common fight, and I call it fight, we have objectives to reach. We, we even need to define these objectives and to recall them to ourselves systematically because very often we lose focus. We don't know where we go and why we're fighting for. In this fight, we have to take into account all these dimensions and all these resources which are in us. Now, when you are a lesbian uh, woman, Romani woman from well, Serbia or Macedonia or wherever, you act as a LGBT activist, here your Romani identity is not the most relevant in your fight. It is not the most relevant. What prevails in this context is your gender identity. And when we think about the Roma as such, we are, a, this is a cultural identity, linguistic identity, historic identity. It's something else. It is a national identity. Oh. And in this identity, we have some resources that we are losing from our side because we are looking for alliances and for broad energy from partners before looking in us, our own energy, our own resources, our own examples. Do you know, have you ever heard about Panachinka? Who has known about, who knows about Panachinka? Panachinka was a musician, a, 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 a Roman woman, who... Tinka! 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 Yeah, she, she, was, she was directing an orchestra and in that time she had to wear in men uh, uniform because this was the society in that time and this was a Roman lady. So, uh, Thomas told about another uh, example in the United Kingdom, uh, Trinity Cuba. Uh, we have this kind of resources, we are just ignoring them and we are looking for alliances. Alliances are necessary and alliances as a power also. These are necessary things but before going and ask for alliances and for help from the other, first of all you have to know who you are, what force you have, you in yourself. And yesterday we were chatting with Bill and I told him, you know, what, I, what bothers me in alliances with LGBT movement for instance, is that we are not strong enough. Because in a partnership, you have to be more or less in the same strength. The LGBT movement is much more developed than, than the Romani movement. It is this way. And we, we are not in the same uh, status to cooperate, to really cooperate now. So let's, let's not forget about the internal resources and to know first of all ourselves, because even uh, in, in your speech, for instance, there was something about three phases. First of all, the, the shame, then the anger, and then the pride. This is a very dangerous process, in my view, because the pride that you gain at the end of this process is not a healthy one. If you start from the shame and you go through anger, for afterwards being proud of what you are, this is not a, a healthy view on his own identity. It is a reaction to the violence and therefore it could be violent, and first of all, it could be violent on you and then on the, on the rest of the world. I didn't say that. But he wants to be violent. Okay, the hands and then Valerie, and then uh, the panelists, because we are over time, 
and uh, it seems that you like uh, food for thoughts, or to for food. It's <laughs> waiting for us. Uh, and we have to start on time at uh, half past one. Please, yeah. <coughs> I have to show uh, remarks to the question of balances and to Martin's uh, statement. I hope Martin is near Ralph. He, he's kidding, he's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, because he uh, asked also me. Regarding dalliances, uh, during the end of the communism in Gorbachev, Perestroika time, there was a speech that regarding the pluralism of opinion, strong yes and no other opinion is tolerated. Regarding the alliances, I think so. Uh, strong yes and no other opinion is tolerated. But when we speak about alliances, we should uh, take into account that this is a two-sided uh, process. And I agree with Jericho that this is a question of uh, interest, of objective interest. Every coalition is uh, interest. We always think what uh, the gender movement, gay and lesbian movement, trade unions and so and so on could do about Roma. And in this way, we underestimate that on many issues, uh, Roma movement uh, could uh, strengthen, could even lead uh, yes. some of the other uh, yeah. movements. For example, uh, one very important issue for Bulgaria, Romania, and uh, the other Eastern European countries is the rural areas development. In rural areas, we are the uh, group that could uh, strengthen the, the development. And I saw this in practice, for example, several years ago when Bulgarian government started to close the rural schools because per capita financing was introduced. Amalipe was the leader that uh, started uh, from NGO movement to speak that this is a mistake and we should stop. And uh, step by step we managed to make this predominant tendency and uh, this stop. Now a lot of schools uh, say we are Amalipe schools although we don't work uh, in them because uh, we became popular with this. We, uh, uh, we have objective interest because many Roma students study in uh, these schools, but uh, this is uh, not interest only for Roma, but for the entire Bulgarian society. So I think we should think more how Roma movement could strengthen the other movements and could lead, because this will uh, promote uh, a real change and this will uh, lead to overcoming some of uh, anti Roma stereotypes and prejudices. Regarding the Martin um, speech, I am uh, always happy to listen to uh, Martin uh, statements. They are always um, conceptual and provoking to us. I don't uh, perceive uh, the, uh, the perspective for more EU in Roma integration, the perspective to have uh, European Roma Institute, uh, European uh, uh, Roma Integration Fund and so on, as alternative to the state uh, governance uh, system. Even the opposite, uh, the state government systems in Bulgaria, Romania, and many other countries are racist uh, regarding Roma, it's true, and they are well established and they would not change themselves. This is also true. Every well established system reproduces itself and uh, do not uh, change itself. So the only way to change this system is to have uh, intervention from outside the system. And the only possible options for such interventions are from Roma movement and from the uh, European uh, Union. So uh, the idea of uh, European Roma Institute, European Roma uh, Integration Fund, I strongly support them because they are not alternative to the state government. They uh, provoke change in the racist uh, essence of some of the state uh, governance uh, structures. That's why I think uh, they should be supported. And by the way, during the last, uh, the last Roma summit, Mr. Barroso and Mrs. Redding supported explicitly uh, this, uh, these ideas. Okay. If they, uh, these ideas were alternative to the state governments, they would not uh, be so brave to support them. But yeah, maybe we will discuss this with Martin when he uh, appears. <laughs> I agree with the William about the necessity to create, create alliances, especially between the representatives of groups which are discriminated. And also, I agree with Samir about the necessity to be equal in partnerships uh, with, with between different players. So, concerning the LGBT, I found one thing. You know, there are many Roma who are conservative, there are many Roma who are religious, there are many Roma who hold traditional views, 
And uh, this fact is not possible to be disregarded. I think that it's very important for LGBT and pro-LGBT to remember that the fact of alliance between them and with the mainstream Roma society doesn't mean they, that they have venue to impose own views on people who think traditionally. I remember I simply had personal experience when I talked with the lawyers of ERLC on the summer uh, school dinner, and I was against the gay pride parade. Uh, I have my own narrative why. And there were five, six lawyers who actually, we had for one hour conversation about it, but it was actually imposing of, of use. My background is religious, even so my parents are not religious, but I was in the evangelical community for many years. And uh, if, and I'm not the only one who sees this traditional way, so yes, of course it's important if you have some common objectives to cooperate, but it doesn't mean that you should brainwash a person, even if he thinks uh, traditionally or something against your own convictions, uh, you know. Just don't use this as a venue for aggression. I hope I explain it. Well, this is only one point uh, where I disagree with uh, Thomas, 30 seconds, then uh, Martin, Eniko and all the, the panelists, one minute each. Um, yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd just like to say how moved I've been by the LGBT contributions here today, especially about what we just said. And I think, uh, I mean, I accept Samir's correction of what he said, but I really would like to underline the need for all of us to back the work of organized LGBT movement to help, especially in Western Europe, where Gypsy communities like the English Gypsy community are much smaller. And I am sure there are still young English Gypsy men and women growing up thinking that they are the first Gypsy or Romani gay or lesbian person that ever existed. Uh, my MA student, uh, Daniel Baker, now Dr. Daniel Baker, wrote his MA thesis on the possibility of a gay Gypsy identity. And he grew up that way. It's an a very moving and how he came to the realization not only that he wasn't couldn't be I mean he came to the realization that he couldn't be the only gay and then he looked for other gay Roma. He's one of the wisest and bravest people I know who is capable of counseling people so we need to back that because those people are still out there in need of all our support. Um, the second the, the last thing, which surprised me, uh, Daniel Baker has moved on from his master thing. It's almost as if, having worked out that he could be publicly gay, having been president of the Gypsy Council, having actually, and this is perhaps something you might think about, the earliest women's, Romany women's movement in England was profoundly homophobic and criticised inclusion of gay people in the Romany movement. It's moved beyond that, thank God, but it's, that, those are things that have to be fought, fought for. And Daniel now says that his work is to promote popular access for Ro Ro Roma, Roma gay and traveller people to art, and that his gay identity shouldn't get in the way of that. And I'm not sure what I feel about that. Do people move through? <laughs> I don't know, or do they? <laughs> no, I, well, about Daniel, I think part of it is, and I, I want to say about this, he's also been rejected by still to this day in the UK, you know, because of when, when he's sort of come out around his identity. But less than anybody before. Yes. And he's won more acceptance than anybody would believe possible. Right, and what I want to say to, to young people here, because, I, you know, as, as a fully gay, or at least a middle-aged one. Um, <laughs> Dan, but Daniel and Bill are also, for, for young 20-something LGBT people, right? Bill and Daniel are your parents' generation. So what I want to say is also, in terms of a queer politics or an LGBT identity, there's also intergenerational kind of engagement. I think that has to happen. 
And again, the alliance question, I'm sorry, I know I, I'm, you're going to kill me, but it's, again, just to repeat also what a number, a number of us said, um, Eniko, Samir, I, it's not about alliances, this is us. None of us is, is, is in this position of being a, you know, a pure Rome, a pure Romi. There's no, no such thing. We're all, we all have other identities and we all bring it together in the movement. And that's the radical respect for difference that I was talking about earlier. Thank you. Okay, very briefly, uh, I'm very, very grateful for Agnes and her comments, and I think it's uh, very important uh, the points she's making, and I agree wholeheartedly with her analysis of what they were doing at the end of the 80s and the early 90s. Agnes and her colleagues not only produced a very energetic politics, but also a very sophisticated politics at that time. But the point is that it was defeated and outmaneuvered and replaced primarily by the state, and you could say more widely by the political establishment and system, and that politics was, was marginalized. And I think it illustrates that uh, the challenges that Roma activists had then, and frankly you still have today, in being able to not just develop a politics, but make that an effective uh, and successful politics. One area I, I, I would slightly quibble with, um, I don't want to go into a big discussion about what happened under communist regimes because they were all quite diverse and different and changed over time. However, Agnes is right, is that at the time when she was being active and through to today, it has very much been seen as a national security issue here. But that came at the end of the 1980s when the assimilation integration strategies were had become discredited. Prior to that, the focus of the communist policy was about trying to bring Roma into the labor force and into society uh, through, what, through what was then guided as, as assimilation. And I think we need to bear that in mind because it becomes, becomes a very stark contrast with the post-communist neoliberal system that we have there, particularly the relationship to labor demand and how that affects social policy and investment in different people in society. So I disagree with the colleague over there that neoliberalism is great apart from the corruption that's endemic within it. Um, uh, and I think this is an area for, uh, for future discussions amongst activists as well about how does the economic structures and economic systems and how they relate to politics affect Roma identity politics and the opportunities that you have. The final thing that I'd like to say is that um, I really appreciate being invited here. This discussion has been a little bit bitty, a little bit here, a little bit there. We haven't reached a general conclusion, but that's the way it goes. But what you are actually doing is, is, is a piece of living and important history. Roma identity politics is a relatively new form of politics. And what you are doing here is trying to develop the concepts and the tools and the language for understanding and developing that politics. And I hope we can continue with that. We could have a, a day-long seminar about all these concepts. What do we mean by Rome? What do we mean by feminists? What do we mean by neoliberalism? What do we mean by power and things like that? But we're doing it now. I just wish we could do it a little bit faster and a, and a, and a, and a little bit um, quicker and reach good conclusions, because we will get to good conclusions. My fear is that the world might um, overtake us and um, we have to deal with a whole lot of problems as well as dealing with solutions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's not passive. <laughs> so, I'll just say something uh, shortly. Uh, uh, actually, my conclusion, I probably, probably I have more clear thoughts in a while. But for now, I, I just want to say that uh, I kind of, a little bit, but I'm a little bit disappointed because, uh, well, I agree with uh, Katya that we, we had uh, quite a destructive discussion. And uh, I mean, not in general, but uh, uh, some, some, of, some, of the, some of these were quite destructive because uh, it is actually very simple. Uh, there is a lack of knowledge of what feminism is and what and what it can bring to other social movements, and not only in the movements, but in other people there doing the things, uh, acting, thinking, and uh, influencing other people's lives. So, yes, that's it. I was just like, 
Uh, I would just like to say that my main conclusion is that people, I would suggest to people to think more about their own power position. Because to me, it is very obvious why usually uh, men are thus uh, misunderstanding uh, feminism. It is because of their lived experiences, in my opinion. Thank you. I would like to conclude by uh, redefining the very topic of this session uh, and suggesting a shift from coalition building among different movements towards coalition building on particular topics that are about social injustice and unjust power regimes, including Patriarchy, including capitalism, including homophobia. And uh, it's uh, actually, again, feminism that uh, was my resource in, in uh, thinking about uh, solidarities, not a solidarity. Thinking about strategic solidarities, if you wish, that are creating the, uh, Deconstructing, recreating solidarities among uh, a, a, among differently positioned people around different issues. So, solidarity is not one and for all and forever. It's a process. It's a politics that can bring us together and separate us from time to time. But again, uh, it's not about fighting against each other as people or as groups, but is about fighting against uh, processes, mechanisms, power regimes that are oppressive in many senses. And, and in this sense, let me turn back to what Jericho said, I guess, yesterday, about the fact that, about the multiplicity of power as nowadays it, it works. So it's not only one center of power that actually we need to react to. So if we accept that there is a multiplicity of power regimes, then we should ex accept that there is a multiplicity of solidarities that we might uh, build among each other in order to continue this shared fight. Thank you. <laughs> Three brief sentence. First, uh, what just came in my mind that uh, how we can want, how we want have respect if we cannot respect the others. Uh, I mean that uh, as a Roma minority, if I judge the gays or touch the lesbians or what else, it's possible before. Then, then how we want. The respect, you know, just respect the others and maybe you can have also respect, you know, the acceptance that yes, you are a minority as a Roma, but there is also a minority as a Roma LGBT people, which have I hate or judge, but you know, just now here is speaking a guy who is actually gay and Roma, and after five, cent five minutes later, this stupid Roma gay will be actually from one Roma man, or let's say woman. Okay, just this one sentence, but I cannot say clear now, but I hope that you, will, you understood the main point of this. Uh, the other sentence I have written, uh, <laughs> the, about the identity, my research topic of uh, general, generalistical changes of uh, Roma graduators, and how I see the Roma graduators who finished the university. Let's say from 10 university, uh, 5, 6 are uh, LGBT QA people. And how I see this, um, these students who finished the university mainly from 1980 who was born. Because, you know, how I see in Hungary we have three uh, main generations uh, who, who start this movement. 
in first second you cannot speak really. They, they were, but not so visible. But now, in our generation, they are starting visibility, visible and, uh, and let's say they, they more often come and go. Yeah. And the last sentence about the third stage of privacy. I, I totally agree with Martin Yossi <laughs> because, uh, yeah, because I never know your name, you are Martin Yossi. Yossi. So, um, you know, there is, there is a point when, when the gay people just will say that uh, for me, these heterosexuals, they are disgusting. <laughs> you know how they can kiss each other. Them. Yes, I'm yeah, supporting them. You know, you know they, are, they are different as me, but okay, I respect that they are kissing on the street. How great. Okay, so as I heard the comments, I feel that there has to be some misunderstanding, and maybe it's my fault I wasn't so clear. I think none of us wanted to mix up the, the two things together, the gay movement, gay movement and the Roma movement. I was just speaking about that maybe we can use more efficiently that, that uh, emotional capital and maybe because every individual has a motivation to participate in Roma movement, in gay movement. Because in that place you are in a favor, favorable light and everybody is around you celebrating who you are. So that's what I, I wanted to say, that maybe the Roma movement also can, uh, I don't know, reach out more people if they are open. And one more thing about the aliens, it's also not about the aliens that I was talking about. It's about that if the gay movements are, for example, not anti-racist, it means that there is no place for me. Right. If you are speaking about the Roma movement, that it has to be so far away for this topic, what it means? It means that I don't have place here. I cannot be Roma activist. So that's what I want to say. I just wanted to finish with a little bit uh, fun thing that because he told that uh, uh, about the traditional Roma. My family is from a really, really traditional family. Uh, he was born. And when he was born, he couldn't speak Hungarian. So really, my father said my family really was a, Roma, a traditional Roma family. But it doesn't mean that he had to give up these traditional things. No. He loves me, and that's the most important. And one more thing about that, you know, I told to my father that I have a boyfriend. You know, and my father had just only one question that, is he Roma? <laughs> So you know what I mean. Um, yeah. uh, but I believe it was still very useful, although at some moments I felt like in 1992, although well, I don't remember that time, <laughs> that people wanted me to choose between my identity as a woman and my identity as a Roma. And I think this really has to be clarified, that there are aspects of identity, but you don't choose between them according to the situation, but they are interconnected and co-constructed. You cannot separate them, and I think it's, it's very important to understand, because then we don't have to make a choice. I have two, uh, two uh, but first I need qualification. Uh, have you heard that you said uh, that uh, uh, the, that topic is aggressive? There are some LGBT okay. people who are very aggressive. Even okay, so the same thing. I come from Serbia, and you know maybe about because we are now very fascist uh, country, and uh, there, 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 there was a um, uh, child organized parade, and this year we had parade. Uh, we talked to police and everything, and there were a lot of, a lot of discussion in the Serbian society. And the same words, the same expression that I heard in the majority society, I heard here. That we are aggressive, that we are. We, 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 we need, uh, we, we, we want to demand uh, something natural, we demand, uh, we demand uh, uh, something that we don't uh, have to have. So, you know, please, please don't use the same expression as fascist uh, people. 
because uh, uh, you also uh, feel uh, feel the oppression and uh, you have to move from uh, what you uh, inherited the, from from the from whole society. Uh, that is one uh, one topic. And uh, the second uh, one is uh, that maybe uh, I heard some. I uh, really like your 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 your. your at some point, uh, your, your, your comment, uh, and Agnesha also, uh, uh, because uh, you said uh, you, you wanted to, 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 to verify identities, and you said uh, it's, uh, uh, that it's something uh, different from each other, it's uh, to be gay uh, and to be uh, Roma, it's something uh, that, is, uh, that can be uh, taken uh, uh, separately, but uh, it's not. Actually, it's not at all because uh, to be to be Roma and to be LGBT and to be a uh, woman, uh, it's uh, something that you are um, holding that all your time. You know, you, you you cannot put your one identity to one place and to go to another place and and, and to go. You know, we need a message on that time. Sorry, and we, 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 we cannot we cannot. Uh, Leave our identities because I I'm Roma lesbian all the time, all the time, all the day I'm Roma lesbian, and when I go to to, to LGBT organization, I'm still Roma, and when I go to Roma organization, I'm still lesbian. So come on, and I want something uh, something positive that I want to share with you because it's uh, Is that um, uh, I um, because I uh, I published uh, my research about uh, existence of Roma lesbians. And uh, uh, that was uh, some um, some agreements with the LGBT uh, leaders uh, in Serbia during parade and after and everything uh, to organize discussion about uh, intersectionality. And uh, nothing nothing happened because in that point of uh, uh, planning something stopped. And Roma uh, lesbians are not so important as other LGBT. And you are the first, then after this is published, you are the first that uh, I, I'm speaking uh, uh, in, uh, in personally. So it's very positive to me, thank you, that I first uh, said about uh, uh, existence of Roma lesbians to the Roma people. Uh, and I think uh, it's, that, that, that's, uh, that said something uh, to, to me. So it seems, it seems that we, we have very brave uh, panelists and uh, the time is really uh, running uh, uh, out. Uh, I think just for the matter of equality, uh, David has to have 30 seconds and then we will go for, uh, for lunch. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to say that we are human and uh, First of all, we must change Roma community, Roma mind in community if we want to change the world mind. Because, uh, and I think it, it, it will uh, grow, because Roma say, like Yossi said, we love our children. So, you must love your children if it's gay, lesbian, uh, or not. And this is, I think, uh, and we are five or six Roma gays and lesbians and transgender in Czech Republic and we go on Roma ghettos and speak with uh, Roma and they accept us. And this, so, but Czech Republic is different uh, from Serbia, from Romania, from Bulgaria, because uh, in Czech Republic, uh, the society is really open uh, to LGBT. So Roma in Czech Republic is more open than uh, Roma in Serbia, for example. Maybe it's because you're activist. No. So if Thank you are not dangerous in the community, for sure you are not dangerous in the community. Uh, thank you very much. We can continue the, the debate over the last 20 minutes.